Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know... Hello, there we go. It's me, guys. I do not know what just happened. My microphone had an issue. So, we're here. We are live, live, live. So, hey, how are you doing today? I was going to end the show and then restart again. Just to get the It's Me Hello, podcast land. But you know what? I'm going to leave it the way it is. Because here's the way I feel about this. Back in the day, let me mix, let me fix my microphone. Because my stand is not the greatest of all stands at the moment. It's been super glued. It's It's been all kinds of things to fix. Speaking of fix things, it's just like when I went to go fly my kite one year. I took a kite and I glued it, super glued it, taped it, all that stuff, and it still flew 3,900 feet. So, even though this mic stand is busted a little bit, it's been super glued, it's been this, it's been that, you know what? It's still faithful to the show. Still faithful because it still stands and it's not going nowhere. So, hey, how are we doing today? What is up in your lives and what is up with you guys? We're here, we're live, and this is officially Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. I got some great news, though, for uh, Outside the Classroom Wednesdays. Not only are we going to start in September, I've actually got a full message right now from our new host, Dr. Scott Mullen from Agape Worldwide Ministries. Evangel Christian Churches and the IAC. So, I got a a first message from him. It's a good one. I don't know if that's going to be the exact first message. Here's what I think, and uh, here's what I think and feel. And I want your guys' opinion. You guys matter to me more, more than the, the you guys matter to me more. You guys matter to me more than just downloads, than more than just views. Your opinion matters to me the most. And I know most of my listeners that are from India can't really comment, uh, can't really do those types of things because in in India and other places, uh, it's illegal to listen to content like this or, you know, worship God or, you know, read the Bible and things like that. So there are people who are in India doing things like that, but it's very, very hard to be able to get the gospel out there in India like this. So, um, most of them can't. So, I go by downloads. This is the way I do my stuff. When I ask you a question like, do you want this? I say, download an episode for this week. Download this episode or a episode this week. And so, then you download an episode, whether it's a yes and if it's if you don't want it, then don't download anything. Is what I basically say because when I do that, my listenership downloads one or don't download one. It just depends. But see, most of them are from India. So with that being said, when I say download one, I know now when you download an episode, whoever how many ever downloads the episode. I mean, if it's just three, four, five, six, seven, eh. But if it's like you know twenty, no, if it's like. 30 an episode and beyond, then yeah, I know what's going on. I know what you guys want. That's just the way I determine things because I don't get a lot of likes and subscribes because most of my listenership is from India. And Indian people are great. I I have, uh, I'm not sure if she's exactly Indian, but one of the ladies at my work and one of the gentlemen at my work are foreign people. and They're really nice people. I tease uh, Alejandro all the time at work. 
I come and say, not you again. He goes, yeah, me, why? I said, I went home. And then I came back, and here you are again. I went home not to have to see you. Basically, to get rid of him, not to have to see him. He goes, well, you don't want to see me, then close your eyes. You won't see me. Go to the fourth floor. So, or the fifth floor, or the cases. But So, I tease him all the time, and it's cool. He's cool. She's cool. And uh, a couple of my uh, uh, people in the after, in the evening after we're leaving and they're cleaning, they're they're pretty cool too. And they're foreign people, but but most of my listenership is from India, and they can't really l- listen to or stuff like that, this type of stuff. So they have to secretly do it. So I go by the downloads because they download more when I ask them. Do they want something or whatever the question is? So with that being said, let me ask you a question. So I got an episode. And it came from Evangel Christian Churches. And I just downloaded their YouTube video. I cut out Dr. Scott's message in it. Cut right at Dr. Scott. Completely at him. And then ended it with Dr. Scott. And then I saved it into one of my folders. So then whenever I get into Outside the Classroom Wednesdays, I can just pull up his messages, pull them up, and call it a day. So, with that being said, do you want a full-fledged, hello, how are you doing? This is Dr. Scott from God Worldwide Ministries. This is, you know, what God called me to do. Do you want a full-on introduction or not? So... The way this is going to work is if you want a full-on introduction so you get to know who he is, download this episode or a episode and let me know you want a full-fledged introduction. Now, full-fledged meaning that it's not going to be one of those where it takes, you know, 20 minutes to uh, talk, but, you know, just like a full-fledged introduction, like I'm Dr. Scott Mullen from Evangel, from Agape Worldwide Ministries, Evangel Christian Churches, and the IAC. Uh, I've been a minister for blah, blah, blah years. I got my doctor's degree from Evangel Christian Churches. And I'm pleased to be with you tonight. Pleased to be with you here. And it's going to be a blessing. So, if you want something like that from him, let me know so I can let him know. That way, once September rolls around, we'll be able to do this. So, again, if you want a full-fledged introduction... Download this episode or a episode, and I will let him know. With that being said, guys, if you just heard that sound, and I got my one of my absolute favorite drinks. My favorite is always coffee. I love, you know me, I have coffee every day. Every time I'm on this show, usually I try to have a cup of coffee with you. I say I got my hot cup of coffee, my cold cup of coffee. Or wherever the case is. But here's the thing. I got another favorite drink. My Mountain Dew Zero. I like diet the most. Diet Mountain Dew. Is usually my usual. But the Zero is be- is better. Because it's it's got zero sugar. No aspartame. Natural sweetener. And it's basically regular soda pop. Without all the sugar. It tastes just like soda. With that being said, do the look forward to Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights is going to be hopping. And I I gave him a few things like every once in a while. I said, when you go to... Because here's what we're going to do. We're going to record his messages. We don't... We, for some reason, on his computer, I'm not sure how to do a actual recording but but uh, because I don't know how to get a record uh, like on your phones where it has a uh, a memo record or whatever you want to call it a voice recorder I don't know how to get a voice recorder I don't know how to get to his voice recorder so he's going to send it to me via video I'm then going to use the Chromebook that I've been using for many years and 
it served its purpose here on the show. It was amazing when it, how it worked. It was amazing for everything. Everything was just great and beautiful with it. A whole lot better than my Win 10 tablet, if you remember those days when I used to say, it shut off again, guys, I don't know why, and here we are. And then in the middle of it again, it would shut right off. So, it served its purpose. I got the new iMac, iMac Pro, <laughs> excuse me, iMac Pro M1 chip. It's a good computer. It's a great computer. It's fabulous. I like what, what it does. And so the Chromebook served its purpose, but it's still going to serve its purpose on the show because all of Dr. Scott's messages are going to be chopped and edited through the Chromebook. So I'll download each and every one of the messages through the Chromebook from a Facebook downloader. If Well, he's going to be on YouTube as well. He's also going to be on Facebook too because Dr. Cheryl is going to be broadcasting live. There's going to be a few places he's at, so I can just do a Facebook download or find him on you on the, on Facebook, find him on YouTube, and I can download download him from there. But I'm going to download his videos and then cut right at him and end right at him, and then convert that to audio, and then put that into my Google Drive, and then ship that into. My uh, my uh, iMac Pro M1 chip computer, my Apple computer, and then store that into a folder so I have all of his messages. I gotta do a couple more. He does one once a month at Evangel, so that saves him a huge hassle because <clears throat> because he don't have to re-record those. He I can just chop and cut those, but. I just got to be very careful because because of the music situation. I'm not trying to get myself in any trouble with copyright infringement stuff. So there's barely any, there's no music in there. Now there is a, like a chord progression of some sorts, I believe it is. But it's nothing really to sneeze at. There's There's no actual physical music singing or singers or whatnot. It's just... A chord progression of some sort. So, chord progressions are fine. As far as I know, they're fine. I would like to look more, but they should be okay. But, it's going to be great because I can, once a month, I can chop and edit his stuff. And then once he does what he does for there, then he gives me the rest of them. He'll have a bunch of them that he can put together. And then we'll take those from the video, con convert them to audio, and then save them into his folder. And we're good to go. So, it right now is a work in progress. So we look forward to September. <clears throat> but I can't 100% physically promise September. Because I don't know what, what's going to happen between now and September. I can't honestly f actually say September either. Because nobody in, this right, in their right mind is promised tomorrow. You know. Anybody can go right now. To be, I can go to be with God right now. You can go to be with God right now. My wife can go and be with God right now. Everybody in this world is not promised tomorrow. And we don't even know if God's coming back tomorrow. So think about that. It says in the Word, not even the Son of Man knows the time and the hour of His return. And you and you look at that scripture, it says, the, not even the Son of Man, and I'm going I'm to emphasize on this part of it, not even the Son of Man knows the hour and the time of His return. Are they talking about God's return? No. And the Scripture says His return. Whose return is it? Jesus' return. Because why? Jesus says that He's going to come back like a thief in the night. He says and when, when Gabriel blows his horn, He's going to be what? He's going to be entering from the gates from glory down to here to come take back his people. Now, if you think of it this way, this is this is this is an example, and I say this to you all the time, when Jesus rode into town on a donkey, why did he ride into town on a donkey to show his 
to show his majesty and in, in, in show his presence. But he also did that to give you a taste of what it's going to be like when he returns again. Think about that. Jesus rode into town on a donkey. He's going to be riding into town on a cloud. And everyone that believes, excuse me, is going to be yelling Hosanna. Hosanna, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And he's going to come down. <coughs> excuse me, devil back off. He's going to come down on white cloud just like he rode in on donkey. And he's going to be praised forevermore, just like they did before. So that was a synopsis or a a taste a taste of what's going to come when Jesus returns. So it's a event that is a taste of a future event for later on. It's just a small taste. That I will compare to like like a sample at a grocery store, like Sam's Club, where you get a little tiny piece of a chicken tender and you get to try it, or a little piece of cheese with a cute with a uh, a toothpick, or you know you get a drop of mac and cheese with a you know a little tiny spoon, or just a drop of spaghetti with a little Italian seasoning with a with a tiny plastic spoon. That's what a sample is. But this is just a a sample, a free sample of what's to come at the end. And see, the reason why I call it, call it like a free sample is because what happens? You taste the free sample, and then you what? You pay for it, right? You buy an actual product, and you take it home with you if you like it. Now, does that mean that it's a free sample, and now you pay for it, and you buy it? No. You can't buy Jesus' return. But in a general sense, you don't buy it, but you give your life for it. You give your life to God for his return. Because if you don't, you're not going to get it. Just like if you don't give the clerk the money, you don't get the product. You just taste the sample. Oh, that tastes yummy, but I'm not giving him the money. I ain't getting nothing. So you still got to give something. You still got to give something for it. And I don't want to say you have to pay a price because you don't have to pay any price for, for salvation. But you still pay something for it. You still give your life to God. In order to obtain the second coming. Because if you if you don't give your life to God. And you don't. You know live for Jesus. You get to see the second coming. And it's going to be glorious. But you don't get the second coming. Meaning you won't be able to go up. And be raptured with the saints. Now. That's when Jesus is returning. Now. Before Jesus returns, if you do if you do repent, perfect. You're good. You're done. It's just like the five wise virgins. They had their oils, oil, lamps oiled and ready. The five unwise, unwise virgins had what? Their lamps not oiled and not ready. They wanted to go borrow some. And finally, when they went and bought some oil and came back, the door was shut and they go, let us in. Our lamps are ready. And the bridegroom, which is Jesus, the bridegroom says, I can't. I can't for the door is already shut. And I cannot open it again. That's what's going to happen one day when Jesus returns. If you're not ready for it. If you are not one of the wise virgins and ready. And have your lamp oiled and ready. Oil it, stick it on the shelf. Don't touch it. Even if you go through dark days, don't touch it. Now you're saying to me, Chaplain, if I go through dark days, I shouldn't use it? Well, doesn't the Bible say that I need to uh, proclaim light? Yes, but pray to God. In Jesus' name, the light of Jesus is more powerful than, than that lamp. Until the time when Jesus is ready to return, then you can use it. But until then... Just stick it on yourself. Put the oil in there. Let it stick it on your shelf. Let it collect dust. Let it collect dust until God's ready to use it. Until Jesus comes back. 
I hate to say let it collect dust because normally you say let something collect dust. It's a bad thing. Like you don't want you to let your Bible collect dust. But this aspect is a good thing because if you think about it, you do not want to use that all up and not be ready for it. An example is I use my phone all the time. And so sometimes when I have a guest on my show, I'm listening to music all day, talking to my mom all day, getting prepared all day, and I forget to charge my phone. So when I go to, you know, use my phone for the guest, it's at like 20% and it's going to die before I even get a chance to say hello, goodbye. And uh, so you get my point. Plug your phone in beforehand, let it charge so you're ready for it. Just like the bridegroom before he comes. Get it ready, stick it on your shelf, just sit it there. Just let it sit there. Don't do nothing. And then when Jesus, when that trumpet blows and time, how's that go again? When that trumpet blows and times will be no more, when a bright morning, I can't remember the song now. Anyways, be ready. When a saved earth shall gather on the home beyond the shore, when a road is called up yonder, you better be there. Think about that one. You better be there. Well, this is out. This not outside class from Wednesday. I am so sorry. This is Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. I still... <laughs> Devil, you back off. I still, for whatever reason, have a slight cough going on. I don't know why. It's just the way it is. It's. I've been... I was sick last weekend, and now I just got this... This uh, whatever I got going on. And yeah, it's just... It's not a fun situation. So, but it is okay. So I got to, what I got to do is I got to prepare one last piece of music because when I went to do the show, I did some testing and see on Chromebook, which is great. It's great on Chromebook, but it's not great on here. When you play a piece of music on here, even if you record and then stop recording on the Chromebook, it uh, resets the piece of music. So you can test the piece of music all day long and it resets. But, but on here, even if you decide you go to test it, excuse me, and then you record, and then you stop the recording, and then you're done, it doesn't reset it doesn't reset the music. For whatever reason, it does not reset the music. I do not know why. I just know that... Uh, there it is. I just know that it's annoying. So, it is what it is. We All they have to do, though, is delete the song, re-put the song back and bring it back to the top or wherever this thing is, and you're good to go. So... But there's a, so much better. It's so much better on, on Mac. Mac is so much easier. Windows is nice. Because the one thing I like more about Windows than I do a Mac. Is my Sunflower. Or my Virtual Cable. Virtual Cable and Sunflower. Well, Sunflower specifically does not work on the Mac that I've got. It works on any other Mac in the world. Just not a... Uh, iMac Pro M1 chip because it's not compatible with the M1s yet. For whatever reason, it's not. So, that is okay. That is okay because everything else is perfect and beautiful. And it's cool because now I can actually view... Uh, Messages and stuff. View messages and stuff. And it won't interfere with... Uh, it won't interfere <clears throat> with the show. So if I'm doing like a recorded show like Dr. Scott or... Right now we're doing King Collaboration Thursday with Pastor Lance. His recorded show. Then... I can do it all day long, and I can 
add stuff, do things, and it doesn't interfere with the show. So, speaking of that, I gotta hurry up and grab his message that I put together. With that being said, how are we doing? And we are going to get into we are going to get into a few but brief announcements. Starting with number one, go to community club two 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 at gmail.com spelled C O M M U N I T Y C L O U D two 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 at G M A I L dot C O M. And guess what you can do right there? Well, first off, you can send me all of your prayer requests. Even if you want me to shout to you on the podcast, send me your first name, your city, and your state. And I'll shout out to you on TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, guys, guess what else you can do? You can call us here at 1-302-448-8443. Again, that's 1-302-448-TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, guys, be aware that you can connect with us through Facebook, Twitter, and email. Yes, email. All you got to do is just go to the bottom right-hand corner of any page on podcast. Well, why did you say that for? Never mind the idea of that. I will get to that when I explain that. I'm losing it today, guys. I am literally gone. So, what else can you do? Well, what else we're going to be doing is out is uh, outside the classroom Wednesdays with my new host, Doctor Scott Mullen from Agape Worldwide Ministries and Evangel Christian Churches and the IAC, which I am a part of. And my wife will be a part of as well soon. Also, guys, <clears throat> what else? What else can you? do? What else is going on in the show? Believe me, I'm losing it. We're also going to be doing this week, this week right now, we are, Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays, where we take Pastor Lance and Ornissa Travis's messages outside the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every week. Also, guys, be aware, it's not happening yet, but it's going to be. I always like to just say it's going to happen soon, 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 soon. That's exactly what I did. And then all of a sudden, Worship Saturdays happened. Then Worship Tuesdays happened. Then Worship this and Worship that. And so <clears throat> it's going to happen, just not yet. We're getting things situated. We got we to get a new host for Kingdom Collab, no, outside the classroom Wednesdays, I should say, as well. So we got to get a new host for that. We got to get another host for... Well, for outside of classroom Wednesdays. And so we need to get the host situated. We need to get messages done. So right now, the rumble is not a thing that's going to happen. But it is going to happen soon where we'll be shaking the heavens, rattling the earth, and rumbling against the principalities of darkness and evil. And what are we going to do on the rumble? We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for the president, the government, whoever that may be at the time. And we're just going to pray. That's it. We're going to take an hour out of our day, preferably at midnight, and pray, 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 fight, 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 rumble, rumble, rumble. Now, back in the day when boxers used to box, they were what? Rumbling. And the rumble means fight. The Bible says you don't rumble or fight against flesh and blood, but principalities of darkness and evil. Here's the thing, though. When you look at your hand in a dark room, can you see your hand? Of course not. Why? Because darkness loves darkness. Let me say it to you again. Darkness loves darkness. Let me dumb this down even more for you. You ever heard the old saying, misery loves company? Same thing. When darkness loves, what I mean by darkness loves darkness is that darkness collects. You got, you know, all this dark, you got no lights on, there's dark in the room, you can't see your hand in front of you. But when you start turning on night lights, you start seeing your fingers, your hands, and all that stuff. So here's the thing, though. When you finally turn off, (laughs) excuse me. When you finally turn all the lights on, guess what happens? You have no darkness left. None whatsoever. So what does that mean? That means this. When you display the light of God and you pray in the name of Jesus, 
that darkness is dispelled. The Bible says at the name of Jesus, demons tremble and Satan flees. It doesn't say at the poof, ta-da, here I am. Jesus does not have to show up in person with his majesty and his glory going, look at me, poof. If he did all that, you would just, you drop dead. The Bible says you can't even look at God without dropping dead because he's so bright. Now, God is Jesus and Jesus is God. He says, if you see me, you've seen the Father. Me and the Father are one. So Jesus is God. So if you see Jesus, you drop dead because he's so bright. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. He does not have to drop down, go poof, ta-da, hey, I'm Jesus. Yes, thou save. Excuse me. Yes, thou save the whole world. Yes, everyone will believe. But see, Jesus the one doesn't want to have to prove it. You know, Jesus does not want to have to have 100% proof. He wants one. He would, he would want everyone to be saved. If Jesus gave you 100% proof, there'd be no need for faith. Let me say that to you again. If Jesus came down and displayed himself to the world, there'd be no need for faith. Why? Because you'd say, there he is. There's his majesty and his glory. And luck, he rose a dead person, or what the case is, if he did a miracle. If Jesus dropped down to show his glory right now, there would be no need for faith. Now, back in the day when he showed his glory, when he rode into town on a donkey, he showed his glory and his majesty then. But see, he was not yet in heaven. So he was still partly man. That still allowed people to decide whether or not he really was the Son of God. Because, number one, even though he did that, the Pharisees the following Sunday still hung him on a cross because they didn't believe he was Jesus, even though that happened. So just because that happened doesn't mean everyone believed because he was, he was what? He was man at the same time. Now he's just all spirit and no man. So... What does that mean? That means that God wants you to believe by faith. Doesn't want you to have 100% proof. Because that will destroy the whole idea of faith. And then almost half the Bible will have to be taken away. Because a lot of that has faith this and believe in that. And if you believe in your heart. And you believe on Jesus and you're saved. And you this and you that. All about belief. Then all that has to be taken out, and then God's word will technically be nothing but a lie. And we can't do we can't have that. You know what I mean? We cannot have God's word to be a lie. Because we can't. But but Jesus wants you to believe by faith. So he don't give you the poof, ta-da, here I am. He doesn't show up. He can, but he don't because it'll just, it'll destroy faith for everyone in town. Now, he did have some people that saw him when they, well, he did have some people that were healed go and tell them what I have done for you. And so he did tell some people to do that, but just because he said to do that doesn't mean the other people that these people told when they're healed actually you know, the other people actually believed that Jesus was God. So, right now, if he just showed up out of nowhere, the whole world will bow at his feet and it'd be done. And that would be fine and dandy because he's God. He can do whatever he wants to do. But he wants people who love him and honor his commandments by faith, not because they just saw the Son of God in his glory. They want to do it by faith. And here's what faith is. Faith is believing in something that doesn't exist yet. Let me give you an example. Pure faith. I tell you I'm coming over to your house. And I'm taking you out to dinner. I've got 20 bucks. Now, most dinners don't cost 20 bucks. But you get my uh, analogy. So I tell you i got 20 bucks. I'm taking you out to dinner. I'm coming to your house in 10 minutes. What's the first thing you're going to do? Oh, yeah, right. I don't believe you got 20 bucks. I can't see. You better come over. 
and you better show it to me first, and I got to see it to believe it. No, the first thing it is, okay, I'll be ready in five. Let me get dressed. You get dressed. You get your nice suit on, or whatever you wear, if you're a man or a woman. You get all dressed up. If you're a woman, you get your powder on your face or whatnot. You dress up, and you show up like a million bucks to go out to dinner with me. Because I said so. So I can say that, and you can believe it and go out to dinner. But Jesus can say that he died for you on the cross. He wants you to believe in him in faith. And he wants you to believe that you're going up to heaven with him. But yet you can't believe that. But you don't see 20 bucks right now, but you're all adamant that I'm taking you out to dinner. What would happen if I said, yeah, I'm taking you out to dinner, just to show you an example. Yeah, I'm taking you out to dinner. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be glorious. We're going to have a good time. And then I say, yeah, I'll be there in 10. And then two hours later, I don't show up. And then you call me up. Why aren't you, weren't you supposed to take me out there? Oh, I was just kidding with you. <laughs> no, you wouldn't like that. But see, I wouldn't do that to you anyways. But the, the point of the matter is you believe in faith all day long that I'm going to give you that, that I'm going to take you out to dinner when I say so. So why when Jesus says it, says things like that, I won't never leave you, forsake you, I won't let you starve, I won't let you be homeless, I want this, I want Why in the world, when Jesus says things like that and says, I'll give you money, I'll bless you, I'll take you with me to heaven, why in the world do you can you say you don't believe in that? When you believe, the analogy, I'm taking you out to dinner. The point is you don't see Jesus and you don't believe, but you don't see the 20 bucks, but you believe that absolutely Chaplain Andrew's taking you for dinner. You get what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> with that being said, let's pray for the man in the White House real quick. Lord, we come before you humbly. We ask you, Lord, to be with be with him in the White House. Guide him in all the, the, the ways you want him. Direct his path. Direct his hand, Lord, and cause him to do what you want him to do. And Lord, cause him to worship you. Because you are the one and the only true God that needs to be worshipped. And Lord, let all this nonsense go away. Let all this nonsense go away. And then repent of his sins and come back to you. Because Lord, every, your word says. Your word says have a repented heart every day. Keep them in health and keep them in finance. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Ba -doom, boom, boom. Amen. Boom, boom, boom. Amen. 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 Like I said before, the best version of that is Larnell Harris's Amen. It's not his song. I forgot who wrote it. It's an elderly guy now, but it's a great song. But Larnell Harris kicks that song like you've never heard it kicked before. So listen to his version. I've already put it in one of my uh, descriptions, so I don't need to put it in there right now. But uh, what else are we going to do on the show this upcoming week? Well, we're going to be doing Worship Saturdays. We're going to be doing nothing but praise, prayer, and worship. Grab your favorite drink and enjoy the, the fabulous music we have here on the show. That's all we use, praise, prayer, and worship. My wife used to ask me once, she goes, why do you say praise, prayer, and worship? Because we praise God, we pray at the beginning for the most part. We praise God, we worship God, and then we pray again. So we praise, we worship, and we pray. We pray, we pray, I can't spit it out now, praise, prayer, and worship. So, look forward to that this week coming up soon. And one of my favorite things to announce is the app. It's phenomenal. You can do all kinds of great, wonderful things. I'll give you some ideas of what you can do on the app. Well, number one, you can uh, like, you can listen to the show straight from the app. You can like, comment, subscribe, or like and comment the show. You can uh, download each and every single episode if you want to share something with somebody who doesn't have the app. Or maybe they're on Apple and don't know anything about me, but you want to show them the show. 
and you think this is something that they would want to hear about, you can download each and every episode and send it to them. What else can you do on the show? Well, you can even connect with us. Here it is through Facebook, Twitter, and email. Yes, email. Go to the bottom right hand corner of any page. Click on the little email button. First off, it's called Podcast Portal, spelled P O D C A S T space P O R T A L. Available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market. So download Podcast Portal, go to the bottom right hand corner of any page, click on the little envelope like an email button, click on your email client, hit set, hit click always, type in your email, hit send. It's that easy. Now you think that sounds a lot. It sounds easier to go to community two 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 at gmail.com and type in your email, hit send. So type in the email address, type in your email, hit send. Three things compared to the five. Click the button, click your email client, click always, type your email, hit send. Five things you have to do. But when you click that always button, that's your that's your key. Click that always button. When you click your always button, the next time you go there is click the button, type your email, and hit send. It's that easy. You pretty much can eliminate number one because that's a given. You already know you're going to have to click your email button. But in order to send the email, you don't have to you don't have to type anything in. You don't have to click your email client or whatnot and hit always and this. You just have to type in your email and hit send it that quick, that easy, and you're instantly sending an email to me here at TGIF. Also, guys, you can uh, connect with us through the Facebook page in two different ways. You can message us on the Facebook page through Messenger, as long as you have an account and you signed up with it. And you can even call us straight from the app. Right where it says message, the very next button is a phone handle picture. Click on that phone handle picture and Sends you right to your uh, phone dialer. Hit the green send button. You're instantly that quick calling us. Never have to go 302-448-8443. Get us one, 302-448-TGIF. You never have to do that again. You just click the little phone handle button next to where it says message. You click your send button and you're instantly calling us that fast. Speaking of one, 302-448-8443, Speaking of that, who remembers the days when you used to have to dial one for every long distance call? Because you used to say, you must dial one first before making this call. I remember that. That was the days when you had to dial one before anything. So with that being said, guys, you can call us right on the app and never, ever, ever, ever have to remember a telephone number or an email again. Also, you you can connect with us through Twitter, too. Just click on the Twitter, just click on, just uh, scroll right to left a couple times, you'll get the Twitter page, or scroll left to right, and then you got the podcast at the top, you got your Facebook next, your Twitter second, and then you just click on Twitter, and it takes you right there. It's so much easier that way. I'm trying to get a home screen on there that will be able to fit all of my little, uh, all of my little, like, you know, where it says Facebook, Twitter, podcast. I'm trying to get that into a home screen. It's going to be kind of difficult, but I'm working on it. But with that being said, one of my favorite things you can do here on the app is you can listen to the play buttons. There's four of them. First one is 95.5 The Fish from Cleveland, Ohio. The second one is KJIC out of Texas. The third one, <laughs> excuse me, the third one is is my former church evangelical Christian churches and my fifth one the fourth one is my former church portage community chapel just click on 95 Five to fish or Cle- from cleveland ohio and kgic's button from texas and it instantly plays their radio station but click on evangel's button where it says evangel it takes their face their youtube page click on the youtube videos and instantly play their videos as well also, when you click on Portage Community Chapel's abstract-looking colors, it's got browns, little blues, greens, oranges, it's yellows. It's an abstract color. Click on that. It takes you to the Vimal page. Click on a video that doesn't say upcoming, and you're instantly watching their services 
and hearing their messages straight from the app. It's truly amazing. Also, guys, my absolute favorite part and the best part of the app, and I love it, love it, love it. Well, first off, you used to be able to make a Google search result at the end, at the bottom of the Facebook, at the bottom of the Play Buttons page, which you can't no longer. It just doesn't work. But now at the bottom of the Twitter or Facebook page, you can still do a Google search result. Just highlight it, delete the the address in there, and put your own Google.com or DuckDuckGo.com, whatever you want to use, or whatever you're looking up, whether it's Moses and Faith. Just type in a Google search result, and it instantly searches the Internet that way as well. But my favorite, favorite, favorite part of the app, and it's fabulous because I, as a host, like to get to know who you are. I don't want to be that host who who doesn't know anybody and just talks, you know, out his pie hole to his wall. See, I want to actually know who you are. I want to get to know who you are, what it is that makes you tick, what it is that God has called for you on your life. I don't want to just be just, he's my host. I want to, I want people to say, he's my host that actually knows me. So I want to get to know you. So you can do the portal chat feature. And what that basically is, it's just a chat feature that allows you to chat with every single person on the show. Every single person on the show, you'll be able to chat with them. So what you do is you go to the portal chat feature and you just type in your name. It could be John Doe for all I care or John or Susie, Susie Smith or Susie or Terry or Kathy or whatever your name is. Just type in your name and then hit continue and you're good to go. No need to have an account. No need for none of that. It's more, it's safer for you guys because if you don't, look, I know I'm not going to do anything funky with your information. I don't even know what your information technically is. I don't know what your passwords are or nothing. I know none of that. I just know that when you sign up, you sign up. It tells me. But you don't have to have none of that. You don't have to do anything but just put in your name and you can start chatting. But you can take pictures from this app as well from the portal chat feature. So go into your, your camera, take a selfie, and then go into portal chat and then hit upload picture. Take the, the, pre, the recent picture you just took from your camera roll, post it into the where it says upload picture, and then hit send and Instantly, that quick, you take you took your selfie you just took, and you posted it to the show, and it's beautiful because that gives the listenership and other people the opportunity to know who you are a little bit, to see some things they've never seen before. How how do you know that somebody that listens to the show never actually seen the Eiffel Tower in person? Now, that doesn't mean it's in person; it just means it's in picture form. But it still was taken that day. And they got to see the Eiffel Tower. For some people, that's magical. So if you're in France, you want to show us the Eiffel Tower, or you're in China, want to show us the Great Wall of China, please do so. We'd love to hear from you because we'd like to know who you are. It's like I always say. It's a, it's a really dumb example, but it's truth. If I own a church and know none of the people in my church, how do I know what to pray for? It's like when I was at the laundromat. I said, hello, how are you doing today? What's your name? Okay, John, so what uh, do you need prayer for, John? So I got to know some people. And then later on, when I came, come back, I could say, hey, John, how was that going? Or how's your daughter? Or how's this? Or how's that? See, and I gave the example of John because we used to have a guy at the laundromat in, uh, in uh, Clawson, Michigan, to where he was having a cancer scare. And it was he had skin cancer. And so one day, out of the blue... Because I didn't know much about, you know, how he was doing, if he was feeling better or whatnot. One day out of blue, on the day, I think it was Friday, I believe it was, he was to come every Friday. And I came on a Friday and sat down, grabbed me some coffee, and I waited. And I never didn't work there anymore. I just waited. And then finally I saw him walk in. And uh, he went to go set things down and get some more. I said, I said, well, hello, John. Would you like me to help you get some of your laundry in today? He goes, Andrew. 
He goes, Andrew, it's you. I said, yes, it's me, John. He would like me to help you. So I helped him a little bit, and I sat down after he got his, he got his laundry together. I said, let's go have a cup of coffee together. I want to talk. And he finally, you know, <laughs> we talked a little bit. He goes, what you come here for? So I said, well, you've been, you, you talked about how you had cancer for a while, and I just didn't know what's going on. And I'd like to know from you what's going on, how you're doing. He goes, well, the cancer is going to be in remission for good in, I think it was July or something. But he was just shocked that I came to see him because I knew that he had a cancer, skin cancer. So I like to get to know who people are. How do I know what to pray for? That's the example. And so it was a cool thing. He actually was shocked that I came to see. He was just, he was just so overwhelmed that I actually got to come and see him, that I came to see him. He was shocked. He said, sure, we'll have a cup of coffee. Let's go over here and sit and talk. And we did. It was amazing. So see, that's just what I do. I get to know who you are because I need to know what to pray for. So show us a little bit about yourself. Let us know what you're doing. Let us know what scriptures you're reading. And if you do want to show your dinner, you can. You do not have to. But please, don't do what some people do. You know what some people do? Some people actually post that I had 25 peas, I chewed them 25 times, and I took 25 steps to the, the couch, and I sat on the couch and watched TV. You don't have to do all that. <laughs> but show us a little bit about yourself. If you play the piano, we'd love to hear it. If you play the violin, the guitar, the harmonica like I do, or anything in the world, please let us see it. We'd love to know about it. Because it's, it's a blessing to see God's people having different talents. If you're an artist, please, we'd love to see that too. Whatever it is, you even if you can do a coin trick, show us your sleight of hand move. I do coin tricks, card tricks, and all kinds of fun stuff. I'm an ad, admin, advent, not magician, because that word goes back to the... Uh, goes back to the days when black magic was prevalent. It still is to this day. Black magic is still prevalent. There are people who perform it every day of the week. But I do what's called illusions. An illusion is something that has an explanation. Here's a really crude example. For an example, when they put a lady into a box and they spin her around and they open the doors and she vanishes, right? I'm going to give you the cheesy Flintstones version of the trick, which is pretty much the way it usually works. There's a back door in the back of the box. So the whole frame of the box doesn't spin, just the walls of the box spin on an axle. So the walls of the box spin about three times, and on the third time, when the box finally stops, the lady opens the back door, she quietly walks out, and then she shuts it, and then the door opens and she's gone. Now... How come they don't see the back door? Because the back door is flush with the box. So there's a secret little string or handle they pull that's towards the bottom in dark. And the box is dark on the inside and the handle is dark. So it matches the dark with the dark and you can't see it. Therefore, they can use it to open the door and get out. And then when the box spins around three more times, of course, you just push the door open. Once it stops, walk in, quietly closes the door, and voila. And they're back. And it's that easy to do a trick. Most tricks are very, very simple. But see, that's an illusion. Now, if I did the same thing where I made a woman disappear and I couldn't explain to you how it happened, then I'm in big trouble because there is things called invincibility spells. But we don't do them here. And I don't do none of that stuff. I do tricks. But if you want to show us a cord, coin trick, a card trick, or if you just want to show us your day and say, hey, me and my mom played cards and here's a video, here's a picture of it, go ahead. You can't do video just yet. You can even private message everyone for, in Portal Chat who owns the app. So 500 people own the app. You can communicate with 500 people around the world. So that, my friends, is Portal Chat. So you can do a whole lot of things on this app, and it's phenomenal. Also be aware, guys, there's one thing on the portal chat feature you cannot use right now. 
two things, video chats and text-to-speech. I can do a video chat on the internet version of Portal Chat, just not on the mobile version yet. So, uh, yeah, show us what's going on with your day. We'd love to know about you. Last thing this, for the announcements, guys, is say to your Alexa devices, say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say, welcome to, or welcome back to Podcast Portal where you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices as well. We also got this video, we got this skill for your video Alexa devices as well. So again, guys, say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say, welcome to, or welcome back to Podcast Portal. That does, guys, conclude our announcements for today. I want to try something. And me and my sister did a test recording once because I was at my mom's house uh, in Michigan not that long ago doing a show at her house. And I wanted to, uh, I put a second microphone up in place because I wanted, you know, if they wanted to say a few words or they want to say hello to my listenership, they so can. And me and my sister did a, a little test. I thought it was pretty funny. So I want to play for you what I call my, what I call a sister test. It was a test to see if both microphones were acting properly and the MP3 was working and all that fun stuff. So, Enjoy this funny little sister test. Hello, guys. This is a quick TGIF microphone and MP3 test for your microphone and MP3 test. And this is We're Going Up to the High Places by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Enjoy We're Going Up to the High Places. We've been deceived by the devil. There you go, guys. That was We're Going Up to the High Places by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. And I want to say hello to my sister on the air. Say hello, Alyssa. Hi. We are going to see if her microphone is working. Say a few things. Hi. Hi. And hi. And hi. And hi. And don't just say a few things either. Say a few things. So there you go, guys. I thought that was funny. I thought that was very creative and funny. And you can tell in the background, she just laughed. It, and I even did the, the laugh, you know, button on there. It was, I thought it was great. I did. So with that being said, let's get into our song for the day. And it's not we're going up to the high places, but it is I Give You My Life by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Enjoy. I give you my life. We'll be right back with Pastor Lance's message. Pastor Lance and our Mr. Travis's message on this week's episode of Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. But until then, enjoy giving my life, but none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Enjoy giving my life.
give you my life. There you go, guys. That was I give you my life by none other than Dr. Tom Ray and my worship leader for over 19 years. Let's get into Pastor Lance and Ornissa Travis's message on this week's episode of Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. Enjoy the message. Praise our God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for this day, Lord. The day that you made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your goodness to us and your kindness. We praise your holy name, Jesus. Father, we just ask you to have your way. Lord God, that you would speak through these lips of clay. Give me words that will encourage your people and minister grace to the hearers today. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that I would decrease and that you may increase. And God, that you and you alone would have your way in me, that you would speak through me. I rebuke the spirit of error, and I release the spirit of accuracy. Holy Spirit, as you minister to your people today, Father, you this will give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. And we ask all these things in Jesus' mighty, matchless name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Um, I want to go right into the Word of God today. And um, it's amazing how even when God speaks to us, uh, to speak to his people, I believe that uh, he speaks to us first. And uh, which uh, it, it, it helps me to believe that we've got to be the first partakers of the fruit. The Bible said that the husbandman must be the first partaker of the fruit. Uh, that I got to eat it first. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we want to go back to um, the book of Hebrews in chapter 12 and continue, as we said last week, to talk from the uh, subject matter, no pain, no gain. And just want to elaborate on that a little bit more and uh, want to encourage you in your walk. Um, and it's interesting how everything connects together. And we were speaking this morning in the morning service um, about how important it is to look to Jesus and make sure that we focus on him, that our gaze is on Jesus, uh, who is the originator and the perfecter of our faith. And um, how that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Uh, he endured the cross. He went through that. Uh, he outlasted the cross. Um, and uh, as the scripture says, he despised the shame. Uh, he did not allow the cross and what he endured on it to be his focal point. But he was fixed on the mission. He was fixed on why God sent him. Um, Jesus prioritized uh, understanding that his suffering was more important than his relief. And uh, him coming uh, to be wounded, to be beaten, to uh, be bruised, to shed his blood and eventually die uh, was more important than getting away. Uh, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53 that it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Um, and it's not that God was uh, a, a masochist. It wasn't that God loved to see people suffering. Uh, but God knew what would be produced as a result of his suffering. And understanding that God looks at the end um, and then sees uh, the beginning. He looks at things as the finished result, the finished product. 
Uh, God doesn't get fixed on and stuck on where things are right now or where they are in the beginning. Uh, but he looks at uh, what things will ultimately become as, as it would be in our minds. So we want to talk uh, again a little bit more from Hebrews chapter 12. And um, from verse 1, the 12th chapter says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares or besets us. And let us run with endurance, so let us run with patience the race that is before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who with the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. But consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Do not despise the chastening or the disciplining of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges, scourges or whips every son whom he receives, chastises is another good word here. I want to stop right there because just for, the, just for a few minutes, just really get focused to the importance of discipline. And uh, it's interesting when this chapter starts, it talks about um, the great cloud of witnesses that we have, but also how important it is to lay aside every weight uh, and the sin. And as we were reading this morning, uh, to lay aside all of those things that makes uh, the race difficult for us. Uh, it is so important that we understand that in this walk, in this race, uh, in warfare, uh, that there's going to be many darts thrown at us, many arrows shot at us. And, and I love the translation from the New Passion translation. As it went on to talk, uh, the latter part of this verse, um, and how the, the lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us. Uh, it was saying how important it was to let go of the arrow tips uh, that are left in us after we've been shot with arrows. Uh, in other words, it is so important to lay them aside or get rid of them because uh, one of the things that happens with us is that uh, we go around with uh, uh, wounds in us from the arrow tips. And those wounds are the very things that um, uh, alters or that factors in the way we see people, yeah. in the way that we deal with people, yeah. in the way we talk to people. And as I talked this morning, um, even uh, uh, about how that those particular wounds also are the things that causes us to have or develop triggers yeah. where there are certain things and, and one of the things I constantly pray about and try to be aware of is those things that causes me to be triggered. And I'm just using myself for an example. Um, and, and it's so important to be aware of those things and to consistently re, uh, release them, to give them to God. Because what we have a tendency to do as we operate, especially when we get in our flesh and we get caught up in our feelings, when there are things that trigger us, we take them out on other people. One of the things you got to always remember is that other people are not responsible for your triggers. Let me say that again. I want to make sure that folks watching live stream get this. Other people are not responsible for your triggers. And if you watch folks and if you judge by people's reactions, notice not their responses. If you know, if you judge by their reactions. Um, you would think that other people are responsible because when triggers are set off, what folk tend to say is that you made me feel this way. You did this to me. You did that. You said that. When in fact, uh, the person was never even around. Sometimes folk wasn't even born when what happened to you happened. 
But yet, we hold them responsible. Isn't that something? When you look at triggers, when you look at triggers, and the message is not about triggers, but it sure is about wounds. Uh, but <laughs> glory to God. Isn't it interesting when you look at it from that point of view that a person could not have even been born, but yet as you grow up and uh, they say something to you that uh, sets you off, uh, then you say, oh, well, you made me feel this way. You did this. You said this to me. And, you know, I'm not speaking to you. or I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. And when the person doesn't know what you're talking about. And what I'm saying, the reason I'm saying this is that it is so important when we're triggered to give that to God. Give it to God and receive healing. Ask him for healing. Because what is needed is healing and not blaming. Healing, not excuses. Healing, and the word I was looking for, was not accusation. Uh, it is interesting that one of the other manifestations of triggers, I remember an apostle uh, that I sat under at one point in my life, I uh, used to say that some people think that one of the gifts of the spirit, the nine gifts, and they're going to make it ten, uh, is the gift of suspicion. That's not a gift. No. <laughs> there is no gift of suspicion. Yeah, as a gift of discernment. Uh, of spirits, discerning of spirits, because even discernment is not a gift uh, from the Holy Spirit. It's not the gift of discernment, it's the gift of discerning of spirits. Uh, but some people think that it's the gift of suspicion. Uh, the, the Holy Ghost don't make you suspicious, and it is not a gift. Uh, but what happens to you is not everybody else's fault. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly a person might have been um, an initiator in the wound and and whereas I didn't have the time to park there this morning, I really wanted to go there. I wanted to get deeper in that and have the time to uh, really explore that. But I think that it's an important subject matter and topic that needs to be talked about uh, because there are folk uh, who still have those arrow tips in them that causes the wound that constantly brings up uh, memory not only delivers us and sets us free, but it gives us understanding, wisdom, and revelation of what happened to us and why it is we are the way. Nevertheless, according to your will, let your will be done and not mine. And then if you sit down in a corner and say, you know how it feels, you 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 know what I'm going through, but I'm getting then we go through that process, which is why we say that I would rather be better and not bitter. I want to be better, not bitter. If I give it to God, I'll become better and not bitter. But if I keep complaining about what's happened to me and hold on to it, then I become bitter and not better. Hallelujah. No pain, no gain. Pain is also a, a measurement that lets us know when something is wrong. And the same thing uh, spiritually or figuratively. If there's something wrong in our life, there's something wrong in our mindset, if there's something wrong in our spirit, man, even spiritual pain can give us an idea that something is not right. Why am I going through all the thing about pain? Because when we give it to God, when we go to God, when we surrender it to God, uh, God uses it to help us uh, to grow in him. He uses it also to develop his character in us. So that we, as verse uh, 1 said, we can run the race with endurance. Remember we talked, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, and how that patience was so important. And it's important to run the race with patience or with endurance. Because when we try to run the, the race without patience, it's hard to endure anything. It makes it difficult to, to bear up under what we're going through. Now, I might sound like a broken record today, but I really believe with all of my heart that one of the things that we need from God is endurance. Amen. We need to outlast what we're going through. And as uh, James says, uh, we need to endure with
great joy uh, knowing, as uh, Paul says in Romans chapter 5, knowing this, that tribulation produces patience. And, you know, tribulation is trouble, uh, produces patience, and patience experience and experience hope. So uh, we run the race with endurance. And uh, Jesus, who was focused on what the mission was, endured such hostility from sinners against himself. He did not endure uh, hostility from sinners against the church. He endured hostility from sinners against himself. I'm making a point here because there's going to be attacks from the enemy against you, against your faith. Because Satan does not want you running the race with faith or patience. But he wants you to give up. And to notice that we serve him today is we ain't giving up. We ain't quitting. We ain't giving in. We're not resorting to our flesh. My flesh only gets me in trouble. So uh, I'm not catering to or resorting to my flesh. Verse 4 says that you have not resisted, resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. It's never gotten as hard uh, for you as it was for Jesus. Amen. Having to carry the sins of the whole world on himself and then be beaten and brutalized for our sins. I want to close with verses 5 and 6. He says, and you have not forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. You have not forgotten the exhortation, the encouragement, what God uses to build you up because you are his children as sons or daughters, because you are his children. And listen to this. And sometimes it's hard to grasp this, but, but listen. He says here, my son or daughter, do not despise the chastening of the Lord or the discipline of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. Don't fall out with God because he chastens you. Because it goes on to say that he chastens or, or whom the Lord chastens or whom the Lord disciplines, uh, he loves. You get that? Whom the Lord chastens or disciplines, he loves. As a good father will discipline his children. Yeah. A good parent, let me say. Because uh, it's important to use a certain vernacular in the day that we live in. Uh, a good mother will discipline their children because they love them. They don't discipline them because they're mad at them. And it's amazing how that we carry that with us and we think that if we're being disciplined that God's mad at us. But look at somebody and tell them God ain't mad at you. Because if God was mad at you, he wouldn't beat you down because he's mad at you. He'd just leave you alone. <laughs> but God ain't mad at you. He disciplines you because he loves you. Because he wants to see his purpose for your life come to pass. Because he wants you to see, uh, to see you as the full, grown, mature person in the faith that he saw you at from the very beginning. Remember, God sees the end from the beginning. When God starts out, when you start out in your relationship with God, he sees you who you are ultimately. Yeah. And the thing that always gives a clear picture for me is I think about the story of uh, Gideon. When God called Gideon, Gideon was known as a weak, timid, scared, frightened man. And some translations say that Gideon was looked at as a coward. But when God called Gideon, he didn't call him weak, scared. He didn't call him timid. He did not call him coward. Why? Because that's not who God saw him as. When he saw Gideon, he said, thou mighty man of valor. Because that's who I see him as, a great man of God. God saw the end from the beginning. Now, God knew the things Gideon had to go through. But what he saw him as was a great man of God. God sees you as a great man of God, a great woman of God. He sees you as that. 
not as a weakling, sniveling coward. Tell somebody that ain't how God sees you. Hallelujah. God sees you as being strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So understand that when God is chastising or disciplining you, it is because he loved you. And it says in verse 5, nor be discouraged when you're rebuked by him. Don't quit when God is correcting you. And that's the whole point. He's correcting. He's not trying to harm you. But he's correcting you. Remember, no pain, no gain. For whom the Lord loves, he chases and scourges every son or daughter whom he receives. And then verse 7 says, I'm going to add this in for good measure. He says that if you endure chastening, as God deals with, because God deals with you as sons, as his children. For what son is there whom the father does not chasten? But if you be without chastening of whom all, which all have become partakers, then are you illegitimate and not sons. See, now it's interesting, it shows God's part in the discipline. How that because he loves us, he disciplines us. Then it shows our part in the disciplining. Because as one who is a child of God, a son or daughter, God does the disciplining. But it's up to us to receive it. Isn't that interesting? Because people think that when God gets ready uh, to chastise you or he's going to whip you, he just pull out the belt and he's going to whack it away on you. No, no, no. There's a partnership here also. Because of his love for you, he disciplines you. But as a child of God, it's important for us to receive the discipline. Because when you receive discipline, it makes correction. When you receive discipline, it also helps you to grow, to become more mature, to become more wise, to become stronger. When you receive the discipline, and it, it, it adds for another point here, that not only as uh, uh, those children of God in relationship with God, does he do the disciplining, and we have to receive it. It lets me know that, therefore, you have a choice in the matter whether or not you're going to receive discipline from God. Now, I'm going to close right there with this because I, I want to come back again next week. I want to continue this because we're going to talk about the types of discipline. There are several types of discipline, but the thing about discipline and it's the same model that we are to look at as a parents in the natural that whenever God disciplines, it's always out of love. It's important to know that because some folks are still scared of God. They still think that, oh, if I do anything, God going to kill me. God going to get me. God going to make me. Stop. God's not mad at you to begin with. And if he disciplines you, that means you're also, and look at this, it also means that you're blessed if he disciplines you. Because he only disciplines the ones that he loves. And he only disciplines those that are his children. God does not chastise other folk children. I understand the way we, were brought, we grew up. And I grew up in an era where everybody on the block beat you or told on you or whooped you or yelled at you. Everybody on the block did something. God don't whoop other people's children. I don't think I can make that any plainer than it is. But he does discipline his own so that he can bring correction. And, and it is so difficult uh, in, in this generation. When I say generation, I don't mean that all of the kids in this generation is bad. It's not what I'm implying. But what I'm saying is the mindset of folk in this generation and the way when you look at media, when you look at social media, when you look at conversations of people and the way that people think, uh, a lot of folk don't want to be disciplined. They don't want to be told what to do. The mindset is to refuse and to reject um, uh, discipline, correction, even honor. But God placed parents in your life for a reason. 
First of all, you couldn't come into the world without them. And second of all, they were appointed by God to teach, to train, to correct, to discipline, and to be the example of love. Now, I realize that today is not one of the messages where we're hooping and hollering and we're getting excited. We're going to have some more of those. But it's so important that something is said to actually make us think, to think outside of the box, to think differently, to think uh, other than the way we were raised thinking, to take us through that process of unlearning and helping us to relearn God's ways, God's tenets, God's laws. Okay, do you have any more? Uh, okay, I can see it in your hand. Thank you. No pain, no gain. It is so important to allow God to work in your life to bring the necessary changes to make us more like Jesus. And that's, that's my prayer, my heart's desire. I want to be more like him and less of me. And that is the work, the process that he takes us through and the work that he works in us. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Thank you for your word today. And Lord, I thank you for the process of discipline. Thank you for your love for us, that you love us so much, that you love us just as we are. But Father, we thank you that you love us enough to not leave us like we are. Thank you for constantly working in our lives. Thank you for working in us, Lord, that which is well-pleasing in your sight. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you continue to heal, to deliver, and to set us free. That you continue, Lord, to let your word become effectual in us, to make us more like you. For that's the goal, that's the desire, Father, to be more and more like you. Help us to never forget in our conversations, in our daily activities, in our business, in our walk, in our relationships. Help us, Lord, to remember, to not soon forget. But Lord, we yield ourselves to you, asking you to have your way in us. And Father, we'll continue to give you all the praises, the glory and the honor. But we ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you today and God keep you. I uh, want to encourage you to prepare yourselves uh, for communion, uh, of course, every week. Uh, this is something that we do, and I so appreciate the teachings in this house uh, that really encourages us to see communion as a weapon. And that certainly is different from the teaching that I received coming up as a child. Uh, it was actually the thing that we uh, would do because we simply remember what Jesus did, and that was the most of it. Uh, but it's important to remember what Jesus did for us when we're under attack. Uh, it's important to remember what Jesus did for us, uh, glory to God, when we're struggling and even have fallen. Uh, so we uh, receive the Lord's Supper as we remember. And as you're preparing yourselves for communion, I also want to encourage you to go to the Evangel Christian Church's website. And if, as you go there, in that upper right-hand corner, push the donate button. And as the Lord speaks to your heart, please, uh, please give uh, to support this ministry. And there's even a, uh, you can make a notation for EMI so that the funds can be directed towards uh, this ministry, Evangel Ministries International. God bless you uh, as you give today in Jesus' name. All right. The Bible says that the, the night in which the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. Father, thank you for this bread that resembles your broken body. Uh, Lord God, that was broken for us. And after giving thanks, he took the bread and he broke it and told them, take and eat. For this is my body, which is broken for you. 
And in the same manner, he took the cup. Father, we thank you for this cup that resembles your shed blood, the blood of the new covenant. Thank you that it is your blood that pays the price for all our sins. We praise you, Lord, as we remember your sacrifice. Hallelujah. And he told them as he took the cup to drink ye all of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he comes. God bless you. God keep you today uh, is our prayer, and we so appreciate you watching with us. And uh, just pray that God continues to bless you and yours, and know that we love you to life. Hallelujah. God bless you today in Jesus' name. There you go, guys. That was Pastor Lance and Ornest Travis's message on this week's episode of Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. Let's get into our next uh, song on our list. And it's entitled For Once. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. And it is entitled For Once in My Life, but none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell, my friend for over 15 years. Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Enjoy for once in my life. For once in my life, I've got someone who needs me, someone I've needed for so long. For once I can go where God leads me Somehow I know I'll be strong For once I can touch what my heart used to dream of Long before I knew Someone great like Make all my dreams come true. For once in my life, I'll not let sorrow hurt me, not like it hurt me before. For once I've got someone I know won't desert me. I'm not alone anymore For once I can say This is mine and you can take it Long as I know I've got the Lord I can make it For once in my life I've got someone in my life I'll not let sorrow hurt me not like it hurt me before for once I've got someone I know won't desert me see I'm not alone anymore for once I can say this is my For once 
this is mine and you can take it long as I know I've got the Lord I can make it for once in my life I've got someone who needs me There you go, guys. That was for once in my life with none other than Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell. And it's very true. <laughs> Excuse me. And it's very true. For once in my, for once in your life, you actually have someone who needs you. Because how many people out there can honestly say that not a lot of people love them in this world. But one thing I want to say is God loves you no matter what. God, no matter what, will love you. You could... For, forgive me, people in this world could be going to hell and they could be walking in there right now, but God still loves them. So does it mean he's not going to send them there? No, he's still going to, but God still loves them. So no matter what, God loves you. Remember that. Our next song is Celebrate by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit Truth Worship Band. Enjoy, celebrate. <laughs>
There you will go, guys. That was celebrate, but none other than the K Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship fans. Get into our next song. And one thing I want to say is we should celebrate God every single day. We should praise and worship God every single day because God deserves it. The, the Bible says to pray without ceasing. I say to say praise without ceasing as well. Whenever you get a chance and a moment to do so, praise Him for His goodness. Our next song is All Day and All Night by is All Day and All Night by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. Enjoy All Day and All Night by none other than The Light Warrior. Enjoy All Day, All Night. All day. Gabriel came to the prophet Daniel to bring the answer to his prayer. The answer to that his man prayer. of God felt better when he saw the warrior angel Gabriel there. Was there. All day, all night, they were watching over Daniel and they're watching over me. All day, all night. Angels are watching over me. An angel came to Peter to open his prison cell that night. You said him he told me. that saint to rise up and walk out and go and make things right. Preach the gospel. And they were watching. They were watching. Watching over Peter, and they're watching, they're watching over me. They're watching. They're watching. They're watching. They're watching, they're watching, watching, watching over me. The Lord's angel came to Joseph in his dream. His warning, it was clear. Herod's after Take you. Mary and the Christ child and get on out of here. You're going to eat. All day, all night, they were watching over Joseph and his family. All day, all night, angels are watching over me. Jesus was full of sorrow in the garden of Gethsemane. Full of sorrow. His angel strengthened him before he went to the cross and spoke to him of his victory. Over death and the devil. All day, all night, they were watching over Jesus and they're watching over me. All day, all night. Angels watching over me all day, all night. Angels watching over you and me all day, all night. Angels watching over you and me. Angels watching over you and me. They're watching over you and me. They're watching, they're watching, watching over me. Watching over They're watching, they're watching, watching over me. They're watching, they're watching, watching over me. Watching over They're watching, they're watching. Watching over me. Watching over you and me. Yeah, they really are. There you go, guys. That was all day and all night by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. Let's get into our last song, and it's not entitled Track 1 by Unknown Artist. It is by none other than Dudley Smith, and it is entitled Born Again. Enjoy Born Again by none other than Dudley Smith. Enjoy Born Again.
deliverance here tonight. I feel the delivering power of God here tonight. Hallelujah. 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 There you go, guys. That was boarding up by none other than my guest on the show, Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. I forgot to pray. Let's pray. Lord, we hope to come back before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are God and God alone, that you are having your way in this ministry. And Lord, we thank you that we got to learn more about you, learn more about no pain, no gain, because, Lord, with you, there are always going to be pains, sufferings, losses all of that's going to happen with you why because because it does <laughs> being a christian lord is not an easy task the minute you become a christian a true christian that was all over you and he's trying to do what he can to stop you so there is going to be pains and gains the easy road lord would be to take the opposite road and Deny you and be with the devil. That'd be the easy road, because when you're in the when you're in his company, Lord, he doesn't bother you. He only bothers you when he's in when he you're in his company. We're in his co in your company, I should say. So Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that being a Christian is not easy because Lord, as Glory Gator once said, we thank you, Lord, for the hard times too. It keeps us depending on you. I thank Lord that you're blessing everyone to settle my voice from cancer. Are you blessing everyone to settle my voice, giving them their heart's des desires, as long as it not be what selfish. And Lord, I ask you to heal everyone from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet from cancer, diabetes, like I have, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis. Heal my mom's arm that's not frozen no more, frozen no more. Heal my sister's heart and her diabetes that's not bad no more, and give her the wisdom to eat better. And I ask you, Lord, to heal them from diseases that contract themselves through sin. Yes, AIDS, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, Y. When you heal them, it shows your mercy, your power, and your grace, and that you're real. Your word says, Lord, you came through the door. It doesn't say you opened the door because you're all spirit at that moment. You came through the door. He said, Thomas, look at my hands. Rush your finger on my side and see that I'm God. What did Thomas do? He got on his knees and said, truly, you're the son of God. And what did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believed. It doesn't stop there. So blessed are those who have not seen yet still believe. So show them now, Lord, so when they come back and need absolutely anything, they won't have to say, I have to see it to believe, because they'll say, if you did it then, you'll do it again. Your word also says, Lord, you're the same God yesterday. No. It says, you're the same God yesterday and today. No, it says, you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So show them now, Lord. So when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to, have to see it to believe. Your word says, you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you. We praise you. 
we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Boom, 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 amen. Boom, 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 amen, amen, amen. With that being said, guys, that is our show for today. Two things to remind you of. Number one, download that app. It's absolutely 100% phenomenal. You can do all these wonderful and fun things. Also, ask your Alexa device. Say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say, welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal, where you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices. Again, say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say, welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal, where you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa device. And we also got a story video Alexa devices as well. With that being said, this is TGIF reminding you to, one, trust the Lord in all your ways, two, lean not to your own understandings, and three, in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Thank you, and good night.